Hello guys and welcome to this video where we're going to have a look at a big miniature and by big I mean close to 50 centimeters tall this is the biggest one I've done to date now obviously this is a bit of a strange one in that this kind of was painted before I understood how to film better so in advance apologies for kind of the blown out uh, settings on the cameras and the fact that it's not incredibly clear but what I'm gonna aim to do and show you in this video is that approaching big miniatures of this size and kind of this scale so your warlord titan size um, but not necessarily in as simple details as that is you're basically giving up a lot of luxuries that you have in the miniature world um, the airbrush is your friend and will be your friend so for example here uh, with kind of null this is an easy color scheme in that mostly it's just black and gloss varnish it's venom you know you don't need to be complicated and the tiny details I use in air quotes like the tongues and stuff while they can be hand brushed there's not a huge amount that needs to go into this this is my standard kind of practice of Color one, uh, wash, color two, and a little bit of edge highlights. Because for something on this big and this huge, you kind of want very smooth gradients. You can just see that I'm going around just doing the teeth. Um, and like I said, basically any off-white color you have, you can start with that. Um, you can go from there. And again, you can kind of see here, I'm just gloss varnishing over all the blacks. Um, the sword itself was the bones of 20 centimeters again I don't do anything fancy here I just go with a red undercoated kind of dark red um, I'm following kind of the comic book null then edge highlights with my standards now this again was kind of before I'd gotten at least a little bit better at glazing and understanding so the colors are fairly straightforward but the uh, thing that, to note about especially uh, stuff this size um, and dry fitting with these a uh, bit of a pain so the sword I kind of had to commit down into it even though I didn't necessarily want to have it I'd normally rather have it just as an off piece but hey it kind of is it is and in the big world you kind of just have to commit at certain times now metallic paints are quite simple this is just i think it's a standard vallejo air metal sand brushed on and you can see how tiny i am compared to it so yeah but basically metallics true metallics especially on stuff this size i think work far better than bleeding for non-metallics uh yeah again i'm using my phone as a torch to try see shades and how the shapes kind of react and as well to get a rough idea of um, what I need to do so with the airbrush again airbrush is going to be your big friend for the big world I'm just brushing on some ink here um, to kind of give the effect that the kind of symbiote symbol on him is glowing uh, again this is way way back kind of when I was a little naive and just using uh, kind of simple stuff but the ink works really great for saturations I still to this day use them for saturations but basically I wanted to kind of give the symbol a bit of a glowing feel now wonderfully this is going to be quite impossible this is your flashbang grenade shot here but just to give an idea again with his hair and colors like that airbrushing just um some off-white colors to try and get that kind of pale yellow that his hair is and what you're going to see hopefully um is next just using some burnt sienna as a really nice way to kind of have dirty blonde uh, in the hair but it gave me my final tone and basically again for hair I kind of use that if I want 
deep in shades and just find these inks are actually really nice for saturation and then I kind of just hand brush the lines over to give kind of the idea of some nice highlight tones in the hair and again now this is kind of where you do your fine detail work but I guess because they're sharp edges it's a bit of edge highlighting just to kind of uh, accent the symbol out a little bit more And yeah, the metallics, kind of very simple, just brushing in some wash here, just to deepen it a little bit. Nothing fancy. Um, we'll see later on that basically, to bring them out a little bit more, what I do is I just dry brush in a lighter silver, just so that when the light hits it, oh, excuse me, it will give you a nice reflection and it just looks a little bit better. But ultimately, because of the size of it, you really don't have to push contrast too much because light's going to reflect such a larger surface area that you don't necessarily have to care about where your individual brush strokes are going to be. So as you can see here, I'm basically just edge highlighting the parts that are sticking out a little bit more. Um, just so that you know, when the light hits it, it just bounces that little bit nicer. And yeah, again, also just washing in the recesses, just again to bring out contrast. So if there were no gouges or anything like that, it would just be a straight kind of simple wash all over to get um, a nice shade over the to over the whole model. But yeah, and then just to harp on, in my own words, you can see just washing it all in to just to kind of unify it down and to make the edges that are in the dark stand out just a little bit more. Now here, obviously, the pain in the Botox that is having to paint something complicated like this. There will be times where you want to have bits that you can just on and off dry assemble. So with here and how I wanted the wash to dry, I obviously had to have the hand a little bit loose um, just so I could see and make sure that I'm getting my recesses right and I'm doing it properly. So you can kind of see it's kind of all coming to shape here. Again, just going around with the wash then dried, just highlighting the raised edges with a little bit more silver, probably a little bit more brighter than the last time, just again to bring out the details. And now what I like to do here is take a very, very bright silver on the armor plates and just dry brush it on. Normally I don't usually dry brush on metals, but for something this large, I think actually it works quite well. And um, with edge highlighting, you run the risk of it just being a little bit too bright. So I was going for more, just the subtle, subtle dry brush. Um, and then of course, with how black this model is, um, I dry brushed basically all the other bits and pieces which is some light greys or airbrushed it for the same effect. And then you can see just for a little, little bit more where the shoulder pads are probably have more edges than the armor plates on his sides there. Just going in with again a final highlight colour just to bring everything out.
And then, again, the hand is off. So for simplicity, because when I wanted to do something like this, I have the luxury of it being in my hand and not committing to the shape. So if I need to paint the underside, I can do so. Whereas if it was um, fully glued in or stuck in, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So I'm just edge highlighting that very, very sharp groove. And here I've moved on to basically the head. Now for this, I'm basically going from a very dark, sorry, you can actually see, I'm not even starting on the faces, more just the hair. But thinking ahead that basically, um, when I get to the skin, as you'll see in, in a moment, I start from an eschen gray and then just work in some kind of blue uh, grays, uh, lighter blues to get close to kind of the skin tone of just that pale flesh. So yeah, you can see this is fairly decent. I wouldn't say probably my best work, um, especially at the time, because I think the hair could probably do it a little bit of improvement. It does look quite it's just not quite there because there's not the depth in it seeing as the fact that it was especially an off-white and an ink and a highlight i'd need probably just to do a little bit more in refining the shapes but for the size of it it is kind of a thing you can get away with now just following on from base coating pretty much the tongue as you can see my beautiful hand blocking up most of the footage is just going to be a simple red Again, wash down, highlight one, highlight two. There's nothing fancy about the big world in terms of having to do things like these, especially on details like this, where this is probably the closest to the miniature aspect of the model, where because you have just the tongue is small, I can go base coat, wash, highlights to bring out the kind of... Uh, sorry excuse me to just make it look a little bit more realistic i'm not going for subtle glazes or blends or going too crazy because for the size of it and what people are going to have their eyes drawn to and what you will see you don't need to go that crazy Okay, so as I was saying, kind of moving on from the tongue to the face, which is the, probably one of the most important aspects of this, I was aiming for quite a cartoonish style, so starting with Ashen Grey, I basically just pick a couple of greys and just work my way up ever so slightly. It's interesting to note that while it's Citadel paint, I wouldn't worry too much. Just working up from straight black, adding in a lot of blue, will probably give you the same kind of color palette.
And yeah, beautiful camera work here to show all my hard effort. But basically with the eyes, I kind of treat them like Space Marine lenses in that I work up from a dark red to a pretty bright orange in the middle just to make, you know, um, lenses. But in this case, those are the colors of his eyes. So it's a little happy coincidence. And then, of course, here you can see a much better view of how I've gone um, with the highlights, like I said, basically up to a very light blue gray. The teeth again, following the same kind of procedure is just an off white to start uh, a nice wash down of Agrax earth to really give that kind of yellowed looking teeth. And then just a very, very simple um, white highlight in order to bring back uh, so contrast the teeth so they do look you know kind of sharp a bit used um, in terms of my yellow work this is mostly airbrushed it's something I still kind of struggle with and greatly kind of dislike using and the only thing I want to do with the hair here is that I basically just highlight with a little bit of ice yellow um, all the areas that would be raised and then the similar goes for um, rest of kind of the yellow bits on it that are from Sentry and you don't need to go crazy like I said it's because due to the size of it you just won't get a huge gradient so once again um, this is showing an important aspect is dry brushing can really save you a lot of time um, on larger models um, there's obviously people argue that it's amateurish or it's kind of cheating and to them I say you can mother love off because it's something like this especially and as I've been harping on about it you really don't have to worry about kind of individual brush strokes because people are looking at it in that uh, close detail but in order to get your contrast out, stuff like this is just a lifesaver and looks absolutely incredible. And all I'm doing is just the kind of off uh, blue greys that are kind of in his hands to make that same kind of uh, colour for the rest of them. Now here is the final kind of aspect where I was going around the base basically painting all the individual squares red. And this is just a conscious choice, just to kind of make the um, full piece kind of stand out a little bit more. It I wouldn't say it necessarily had to be red for this, could be any other color, but it just adds that little bit more depth to it. And then, yeah, this is it all done. So I know this is a brief one because uh, it's kind of been a bit of a strange one, but uh, thanks for watching.